Hey guys and gals, uh, this is my first um, crafting YouTube video. Um, I wanted to make something so people that didn't know how to crochet or, <clears throat> excuse me, or that needed a brush up on their skills per se can watch. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me to start it so they could, you know, either, you know, they didn't know how to read a pattern or they didn't know how to read a chart or they didn't know the different weights of yarn. They didn't know hook sizes or something crazy. Um, so first thing I think personally, I haven't, I started crocheting when I was six. So I just kind of learned as I went. Um, YouTube has been a godsend, even for me. Um, learning how to do different stitches and stuff, uh, especially like the advanced patterns and everything crazy. Um, so I think I'm going to start with hooks first. I think that's probably where you would, you would want to start. Um, so this is my little, my little hook pocket. Um, a lot of people have their own little case. I haven't even made one. I never make anything for myself. So this is all my hooks, all my hooks. Um, I prefer the aluminum over plastic um, or the crystal lights, which is like a clear plastic. The aluminum seems to last longer. The only thing I have a problem with is I had an older hook. I don't know what happened to it. Um, and the aluminum actually, like the, the paint actually wore off, uh, which is fine. But, you know, the older they get this, the paint, you know, the, I don't know if you could see it, but like the, the gloss and the paint will rub off. Um, so let's see, what's my smallest hook? So this, <clears throat> excuse me, I am ridiculous right now. So this is my smallest hook, um, that I own. They do go smaller than this. This is a seven, I can't even see with my phone. Uh, this is a seven or 1.65 millimeter. Um, let's see if I can turn this off really, uh, there we go, the autofocus. Um, let me see. Come on, focus. Focus. Why is this not focusing? All right. Well, I don't know if you can see the little hook, but um, it's a little baby hook. Let me see if I can find some yarn next to me. There we go. <clears throat> it is used to crochet this. This is crochet thread. Um, and if you can see, it's really, really, really thin. Um, you can use it for doilies. Um, you can use it for fillet crocheting, which I'll get into. Um, but it is very, very, very thin. It's almost like uh, embroidery floss. So that's that's for that one. Um, and it will tell you. Let me see. Let me grab one something here. Um, so say this is this is some yarn that I'm going to use for um, a shawl. But if you look right here, which I don't know why my autofocus is not working here. So see right here, it says right here, USH. Um, so it'll tell you what, what size hook to use. You don't necessarily have to use that hook, but this is the recommended size for the hook. Um, this is knitting, which I still have no idea how to knit. I've tried. Um, but see, the, so this will say, this says UH, USH. So this is an H hook. So it'll say it right here. H dash eight to, excuse me, eight then five millimeters so sometimes it'll say I'm not sure how UK works or overseas um, but I think they go by millimeters I'm pretty sure so that's why it says it right here sometimes in patterns it'll even tell you to use you know a five millimeter hook or um, let me see what no six millimeter so so my silver one is my smallest one and I think then they go up to the letters um, and I want to say the letters let me see, because I don't have all of the hooks. Um, so this is my next smallest one. And then this is when you start to get into the letters. So this is a D, or a 3 to 3.25 millimeter. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then this is the E. Um, so this is how, I mean, I had to use the boy hooks, but that's pretty much how I use the hooks. This doesn't have a size. This is one of my plastic ones, um, my bigger ones. I want to say this is um, a P. I think. I think this is a P. Um, I also have a Q, which is bigger, um, and my N, which is in the other room. It's in a project right now. Uh, that's one of the ones I have with the bamboo hooks. Okay, so next thing, I'm going to leave my hooks out. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm having allergies today. 
So next things first, um, terms, which if anybody's ever crocheted or knitted or anything like that, there are terms that you need to learn, especially when you're reading a pattern. Like when you first read a pattern, you're like, oh my God, you know, this thing looks like gibberish. But once you break it down and you know what each term means and what each term, what stitches what, um, it's pretty, it's, it's almost like a different language. But once you learn it, you're fine. So I've printed this, this little chart up for everyone. Um, this has the, the UK terms and the US terms. The only difference is um, the UK terms is, is almost like one stitch larger than the US terms. So the US terms right here, this is a slip stitch and their slip stitch looks like SS. So we're not, so, which makes sense, slip stitch. Um, and then ours is actually like spelt out a little bit. So their single crochet is their double crochet. So if you, if you notice like down here, there's a double crochet. So it's almost, uh, I'm trying to think of like the term, but it's almost one stitch bigger. So our single crochet is an SC. Um, our half double crochet is the HDC and then DC is double crochet. TR is treble crochet and then DTR is double treble crochet. Um, so then, you know, if anybody from the UK is watching, I mean, I'll go through these. So yours is going to be slip stitch, which is SS. Um, DC is also double crochet. Um, half treble crochet is our equivalent to the half double crochet. So this is half treble and then their TR is treble, DTR, double treble, and then TR, TR is triple treble, which you can make a triple treble in um, in the, the US terms, it's very rare to see it in the, in patterns. Um, the bigger stitch you get, um, it's, it's going to be more open. It's going to be more airy. There's going to be more room. There's going to be more holes when you use your single crochet for my baskets. Um, if anyone see my baskets, I make them in single crochet using two pieces of yarn together. It makes it stiffer. So the smaller the stitch, the um, thicker it's going to be. The larger the stitch, the more airy and more thin it's going to be. All right, so we'll come back to that if anybody has any questions. Um, and then <laughs> this is going to be crazy. So we, we went through terms, and then this is what a chart pattern looks like. And yes, it does look really crazy. Um, I'm just now learning how to read a chart and I've crocheted for years. Um, so don't worry if you don't know them all, but so a chart pattern, a lot of times, um, a lot of the antique patterns, like if you buy an antique book from somewhere or online or yard sale, they don't have written patterns. They'll have chart patterns. Um, and so these are symbols. It's almost like a key and you have to match up the symbols with the, um, the pattern. So let's see if I can get a little close here. So this is your chain stitch, which is your beginning, which I'll show you. And then a slip stitch is a little, little tiny dot. <laughs> it does look really crazy, especially when you're actually reading a pattern. If the pattern, if the pattern's really big, that little dot, you can barely see it in there. You have to keep an eye out. Um, X or a plus uh, is a single crochet. Um, and then this little star means that both symbols are commonly used. Um, so this is a half double, which is just the T. Okay. And then a T with a little dash through it, um, kind of like a, you know, train thing is a double crochet. And down here two is treble crochet. And then this is what I was talking about. The double treble, which is the same thing as the triple treble, um, has three. If you have a triple treble in your pattern, there's going to be four. They don't necessarily put it in there. So these look like it's a whole different language. I mean, when I first started to learn how to read patterns, I was like, what is this? What is this thing? What is, I don't understand what this means. So if you break it down, so SC, if you remember, is a single crochet, two together. So this is what they call uh, a decrease stitch. Um, so if you're making something and you're putting two stitches together, it's gonna make it um, almost contract. So it's gonna make it kind of tighter. So if you're making a basket and you're going around that making that go around like this is the decrease. Okay. 
So this is the single crochet three together. So this is what this means. So there's one, two, three. Um, then the double crochet two together. So all of these are decreased. And then this one way up here is also a decrease. So double crochet three together. So these are where you're gonna get into your fancier stitches. Um, this is, uh, sorry about my dry skin. Um, this is like puff stitches or cluster stitches or popcorn stitches or whatever, they're all the same. Um, so this is three double crochet cluster. So what this means is you're gonna make three double crochet, but you're not gonna quite finish the stitch um, and then you're gonna connect them all together. And then this is three half double crochet cluster. So if you notice, see how the double crochet has got your little, your little notch in there? It's the same. See, little notch. <clears throat> and then this is this is called the puff stitch or the bobble stitch. Um, these are really good in scarves or blankets. Uh, it actually makes a little puff um, stitch. And then this is the popcorn stitch. This is actually one of my favorite stitches. Uh, it's five double crochet popcorn. Um, and then this is the five double crochet shell stitch, which is also a very um, nice stitch for like a scarf or anything like that. <clears throat> Excuse me, it makes little shells if you didn't notice. And then this is a peacock. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not sure. Uh, it's a chain three peacock. And what it is, is you're going to chain three and then you're going to slip stitch into the first one. I know it sounds really ridiculous, but I'll show you. Um, it looks like a little hat <laughs> and that's really good for edging or to make um, like leaves or anything like the very tip of the leaf that's what that makes it makes like the little almost the little triangle this is uh, called the front post double crochet or FPDC and what that means is you're actually stitching into the row ahead or like the row below into the front so it actually makes almost like a channel or if you're knitting, it almost makes um, like a cable. This is back post double crochet or BPDC. And then these, I have never seen these in a pattern, so I'm not sure um, if they're actually, um, if actually, if people actually write them in, but they're little, almost like happy faces and sad faces. Uh, work in back loop only or worked in front loop only. So back loop is obviously that back loop and then your front loop is the loop that's closest to you, which I'll get to. So that's a chart pattern, and I'm still learning how to do that. So I still use my handy dandy um, little, I, use, I still use the chart. So I'm not judging, there's no judging. So <clears throat> next thing is when you finally find a pattern. So I have a pattern that I wanna start with everyone. Um, I'm not gonna finish it necessarily, but I do, want to, I do want to start it so that everybody can see. This is a dishcloth pattern, and it's a very simple dishcloth pattern. Um, and it's worked in the front loops and the back loops. Really simple. Um, but before we do that, I wanna go over weights. <clears throat> there are certain yarn weights that you wanna work with. Um, patterns usually will say, um, like this one actually, let me just pull up this one. So this is a worsted weight cotton yarn. Uh, worsted weight is, is like a sport weight, medium weight. Um, those, they should say it right on the actual label. So let me grab. This is my cotton yarn. Let me see if I can. Ooh, it's so big. All right, sorry about the rip, but let me see. So this is medium weight. Um, so this is the worst of weight. This is cotton yarn. This is 100% cotton yarn. Um, so I use cotton yarn for a lot of my dishcloths, um, bath stuff, anything that's going to be wet. Because uh, you can wash it. Uh, I use it for my coffee cups. Uh, I have a little like coffee cozy. You can use the cotton yarn. Uh, it does wash better than acrylic yarn. Um, acrylic yarn, if you put it in the dryer, if you put it in the dryer too warm, it can melt the yarn, which is crazy. So that's why I use a lot of the cotton yarn for kitchen or bath stuff, anything like that. So I have, I don't have every weight of yarn. I do have a lot of yarn, but a lot of my yarn doesn't have the labels on it. So <laughs> I can't really show it, but I have that purple one. Um, and I have this one that I want to do with scarves is this is uh, wool free lace, which is, which is really pretty. I found this at, I want to say, I think it was Joann's and it's a little, it's a little, it's got a little give to it. I want to make a shawl out of it just when springtime comes. Um, but I found and it's wool free, which is nice for anybody that's allergic to wool. 
So down here, I don't know if anybody's actually sat and read the labels. I read everything. So this is 440 yards or 410 meters. Patterns usually will tell you how much of yarn to use. I don't necessarily go by that because sometimes I use a different size hook. Like I said, bigger the hook, the more open it is, uh, the bigger it will be. The smaller the hook, the tighter, the smaller it will be. So I'll go over gauges in another video because I'm not quite familiar with gauges. I usually just kind of eyeball it. But it will tell you in the pattern how many yards or how many meters to use. I don't, like I said, I don't usually go by that. I usually buy more than what I need. Eh, if I have leftovers, I have leftovers. So this is 88% acrylic. I'm not sure what PBT is. If anybody knows, you can comment. Uh, and then 5% metallic, just because it's, you know, got the little metallic in there. So down here, let me move this out of the way. Stop it. So here's where you get all the, the goodies. So this is a super fine yarn. So if anyone noticed, was that end? So it's really, really thin yarn. Not as thin as the thread, but it's, it's I think, I want to say it's one or two steps up. So this is knitting needles. Like I said, I have no idea how to read this because uh, I don't knit. But I think this is uh, two, size two needles, I'm guessing. Um, and then over here is size E hook. So let me find my E hook here. I think it's one of my small, oh, it's over here. No, it's on the side. So you would be using this size hook with it. So this is what the hook looks like. Um, I probably won't be using this size hook. I will probably be using my F hook. I, like I said, I usually, I don't crochet, uh, so this is my F, this is a different brand, but um, my Susan Bates hook F, so it's actually a little bit bigger. Um, I don't, I don't crochet tight. If you crochet tight, like if you're, if you're first starting out, you're probably going to crochet tight because there's a thing called a tension, which I'll show you when we get into the pattern. Um, but if you crochet tight, definitely use one size hook bigger. It's not going to make a difference, you know, usually with one size hook, if you go two or three sizes bigger, you're going to notice a huge difference. Um, but so it's calling for, excuse me, a size E hook. And then this is kind of, this is what would be like a, I call it a sample size. So it's going to be four inches by four inches or 10 by 10 centimeters. Um, and you're going to do 26 rows. So it's going to be 24 uh, single crochet by 26 rows, and that's going to make the 4x4. Four four. I'm not sure why they put that there. I don't usually go by the square, but I usually, I definitely look at the size hook just so I can kind of gauge it for myself. So down here, if anybody's ever done laundry before, you know what these mean. So this is machine wash and tumble dry. Um, no iron and no bleach, obviously. And I want to say that's it for that. So then this one is going to be the next size up. So this is a two and this is fine. This is literally one size bigger than the, the green one. And I don't have a three, but this, and this is my cotton. This is my four. So this is my medium weight yarn. And then I don't have a five, but I have a six. And this is, this is as big as you're going to get. This is super bulky. Uh, this is what I use for... And this calls for an end hook, which I said, this is the hook that's in the other room. It's in a project already, and it's my bamboo hook. Um, and then this is six stitches by eight rows. But this is super bulky yarn. It's very nice and thick. Uh, this is, let me see, this is Lion Brand. Uh, Woolies Thick and Quick. And I use, I love to use this and Homespun or anything like that for scarves because it's really, really nice and thick and warm. But a lot of times, a lot of people are allergic to wool, so they don't want it. This is wool acrylic mix, so it's not full wool. But I don't like to use it for people that are allergic to wool, just because I, you know, obviously I don't want them to get itchy. So I use the Homespun, uh, Michael's brand Homespun. Homespun or Loops and Threads, there you go. That's the one I was thinking of. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that one doesn't have wool in it or anything. So this is the chart. Uh, I printed this out for everyone. Uh, one or super fine, which is the green one. And then this is sock, baby, and fingering yarn. Um, sock yarn is going to be very, almost, it's it's more forgiving than the green one. It's obviously stretchy for socks. Um, baby yarn, I've never seen baby yarn in a one. Um, usually I see it in the twos or even the threes. But And then fingering yarn is the, um, I want to say it's the very thin yarn. So the, the crochet thread isn't even on this chart because it's it's its own 
I want to say it's like DMC. It's almost like, um, yeah, like embroidery floss. Like if you look at it, I don't know if you can see it and my dry skin. Um, and then the next one up is going to be the two are fine baby and sport yarn. I don't like the sport yarn in this category. Usually the sport yarn for me is down here. Sport yarn is like Red Heart, um, Super Saver acrylic yarn. Uh, like I said, I've never seen baby yarn in the fine. Three or light yarn, which is the one I don't have, is light worsted in um, DK yarn. And then four or medium, which is my cotton yarn, worsted Afghan and Aran yarn, or Aran yarn. And then five or bulky, which is another one I don't have, Chunky Craft and Rug Yarn. Now, Rug Yarn for me, I know they have, uh, it's it's after the bulk, super bulky. And I think it, now it's like the, the new thing, which I've never, I haven't, I haven't played with it yet, is the arm knitting, which I really would love to try. But you can make rugs like that. But again, I wouldn't use acrylic for rugs. I would probably use, uh, if they have it in cotton, I would probably use cotton yarn. So six or super bulky is the roving in bulky yarn. Roving, I want to say roving is like the rug yarn as well. Uh, and the bulky yarn, which is my wool yarn. So <clears throat> now that we know the basics a little bit, um, we can probably get started on actually doing it. So this is a little, it's a very, very simple, I found them Ravelry. Let me see if I can pull it up on my computer so I can actually give credit. Um, second doo, doo, doo. and I'll put the link in the description um, I found this on Ravelry it's called easy crochet dishcloth by Sherry Mancini um, and her little note says this makes a loose thinner dishcloth than any of the worsted weight patterns I've seen on the internet I personally like a thinner dishcloth it's a stretchy dishcloth that rings out easily uh, me personally I also like a thinner dishcloth um, just because it's it's much it's not as stiff so like like I said this calls for and I'm trying to like show you so this calls for an H hook uh, I usually use an I for the cotton yarn just because it's it it like I said it doesn't really make that much of a difference but I like it because it's it's a little bit thinner like I said my tension my tension is usually pretty good when I first started my tension was awful I made a little like dishcloth. It was so tight, I could have probably bounced food off of it. Like I could have used it as like you know a slingshot or something. It was so tight. So anyway, so this is this dishcloth. I didn't put the picture in there. Um, and then, so we're gonna grab. So this, like I said, this is worsted weight cotton yarn, which is what the medium yarn is. Um, and then size H, which I'm not using an H. I'm going to use an I. Um, let's see if I can find my eye hook. I apparently don't have my eye hook handy. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess we'll be using an H hook. <laughs> I think my eye hook's in a, pat in a project somewhere. All right. So let's try. All right. I think, uh, sorry guys, I had to go get my hook. I didn't want to use a smaller hook. Uh, just so you can see the stitches better. And I wanted to grab my my end hook anyway to show you. Yeah, that's an end right here. Okay, so this is my end hook. Let's see how big it is. It's for, it's used for this, this yarn. Um, and this is my bamboo handle. I love this hook. The only, it did get a little getting used to the bigger handle, but I like it. Um, and then this is my eye hook. So, I'm going to jump into the pattern. Yay! Okay, so, like I said before, worst weight cotton yarn. Ta-da! And size H hook, which you already know I'm not using the H hook anyway. So, first things first. Chain 29, or any odd number of chains, to achieve the desired width for your dishcloth. I'm just going to do 29. It's actually going to work out to be 28. Um, because in the second row, which is row one, you're going to be stitching into the second chain. So you're losing, you're going to be losing a stitch, but all right. So chain 29. So first things first, we're going to make a slip knot. Very, very simple. A lot of people have different ways of doing it. 
I had a, I had a way when I first started doing it, and apparently that wasn't the right way. So I relearned how to do it. So the easier way that I know how to do it is you wrap it around your finger twice. Now, with the tail in your right hand, the end in your right hand, the ball in your left hand, you're going to wrap it once and then wrap it around the front like that. Now let me see if I can do this in the camera without actually looking at my hands. You're going to bring this over so it's going to crisscross just like that. And then you're going to grab this one. And you can do this with the hook too and bring that over so you're actually um, can't think of the word. Brain fart. Uh, you're actually going to crisscross it. And that's going to make the knot. So you're going to insert your hook. Pull it tight. Not too tight. And the way that I hold my tension, like I said, this is comfortable for all different people. It's how you feel comfortable holding it. This is how I feel comfortable holding it. So it may take you a few times to figure a way that you're comfortable, but I'll show you my way. So you grab the, the, the end with the ball with your pinky. You wrap it around. You bring it up, and then you bring it over your index finger. And then you hold with your ring finger, middle finger, sorry, middle finger and thumb. You're going to hold this part right here, this tail. Now, again, with the hook, a lot of people have different ways of holding the hook. Some people hold it like a pen. Some people hold it like this. I tried holding it like a pen, and I was so not comfortable doing that. So I hold it like this. Again, it's all personal preference. There's no right or wrong way. No one's going to judge you if you hold it like a pen or you know, all different ways. So to make your first stitch, sorry, allergies today, you're going to wrap the yarn over just like that. And then you're going to bring it down and into the loop. So there's your first one. So this is what the stitch is going to look like. My autofocus would work. That would be fantastic. Um, it looks like a V. See it? So then you're going to do this 28 more times. So bring it through. Yarn over, bring it through. Now you don't want to hold it too tight. You don't want to hold this hand too tight because you don't want to make the stitches too tight because you're going to have to go back into them and stitch through them. So that's where your tension comes in. <clears throat> like I said before, with mine, when I first started, my tension was really tight. But you learn, you know, you learn if you ever mistakes. Um, the best thing about crocheting is that you can take it apart. You can take the stitches right out and you're not going to lose yarn. You know, you don't have to like, you know, cut the yarn and then start over unless you're unless you're doing color changes which we'll get to that in another video but now I am notorious for losing count so we're gonna try and count this again so we're gonna count the little V's so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then this is thirteen right here And 29. Now don't worry if you're not fast enough or, you know, someone's slower than you or, you know, me. Like I said, I've been doing this for years. I'm still slow. I, I like to enjoy it. I like to take my time. It is very therapeutic. I'm not going to rush through it because I miss stitches. Uh, the only thing I can do is, um, my boyfriend laughs at me, is if I'm doing just a simple stitch, you know, just... Same doing the same stitch over and over and over. I can watch TV while I do it, and I don't even have to look at the project. Uh, but if I'm writing, if I'm reading a pattern, you know, I, I do want to pay attention because I want to make sure I get, you know, all the stitches right. So this is what your chain's going to look like. You know, depending on what you're making, obviously it's going to be longer, shorter. 
but this is 29. And you can see all the little V's. Let me see if I can get my autofocus to actually focus in on that. Um, come on. Uh, not really. Um, but the little V's. Oh, there we go. So the little V's. And those are your stitches. Now, when you go to stitch into the next row, which is going to be row one, some people will stitch in this. I stitch in this little loop right here. Some people in the back, if you can see that, there's little bumps right there. Some people will stitch into that, that bump. Um, and that just makes this edge uh, more finished, I guess you could say. Me, I don't really like to crochet in the bumps. Like I said, it's personal preference. Um, you know, which one makes it look better. But this is, it's a dishcloth, so it's not really, you know, if you were, if you were making something really nice for a client or, you know, a family member or grandmother or whatever, and you wanted to make it not look so thin on the starting end, you could crochet in that bump. Because once you crochet in this bump, let me see if I can actually pinch it, you'll actually, this will be your finished edge. So it'll be nice. And I mean, you can easily add a border to it. So row one. Dun, dun, dun. So as we remember, SC is single crochet. So single crochet and second chain from hook in each chain across. Now I'm just going to do one direction at a time because then this is the end over here. So single crochet and second chain from hook and in each chain across. So that means that we're going to single crochet in every chain to the end. So, <clears throat> so this is not your first one right here. And this autofocus is not working today. There we go. So this is not your first one right here. We're not going to stitch into this one. We're going to stitch into this one. So we're going to go like this. If I can see through my camera. So you're going to insert the hook. Like I said, I usually just do the loops. You're going to yarn over. Pull through this one. So you have two. So you're in this loop and you're still at this very end right here. Then you're going to yarn over again and you're going to pull through both. Ta-da! You made your first one. Yay! So you will notice there's a little nubby right here. That's just because of that one that we kind of skipped. Um, but that'll, it'll look better, you know, when we get to like the second and third row. So then we're going to insert again, boop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. And Thor apparently wants to talk to me. Okay. So we're going to put in, yarn over, pull through, and pull through again. All right. So I want to do that. What is he talking about? He's very talkative today. All right, so we're going to work that through. Like I said, this is my normal my normal speed, so I'm not slowing down or speeding up or anything. This is just, this is my normal speed. I don't go too crazy. Trying to look under my phone to see because <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to stitch while you're looking at, through the camera phone. So sorry guys, if I'm kind of doing it off camera a little bit. I'm trying to hold it where the camera is. Almost there, almost there. And if anybody's wondering, yes, I do get hand cramps a lot. Um, when I get hand cramps or I feel like my hands get sore, I usually just take a break.
This is going to be your last one right here. Sorry about my allergies, guys. So this is your last stitch right here. So we're going to do the same thing. Bam. See? So this is your row one. This is all single crochet. And then this is your, this is going to be where your row two is going to start. But like I said, see how that, that finished edge is just the one loop? If you had stitched into the bumps, this is what your, your finished edge, your starting edge would look like. So, row two is going to be, let's see, all right, single crochet in back loop of first single crochet. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, I lied. We're going to do this back end over here. Chain one and turn. I forget there was a <coughs> second little thing. All right, so, sorry, I did that off camera. So this is your, your last loop. Oh, sorry. And we're gonna chain one. So all we're gonna do is just make a chain. Boop. So this row, single crochet and back loop of first single crochet. So we're not gonna do the rest yet, but this is gonna be, so we're gonna single crochet and back loop of first single crochet. So remember we're gonna turn, boop. So single crochet and back loop of first single crochet. So this is your first one right here. So this is gonna be your first row. Now count the chain. Chain, the chain is to make room for the stitch pretty much. So this is the back loop right here. This is the front loop. The back loop is the furthest away from you. When you get into the more uh, advanced patterns like basket weave, you're going to need to know what back loops and stuff are. So this is the back loop front loop. So we're going to put it into the back loop, just like that, and we're just going to make a single crochet. Boop. And then you're going to have the front loop sticking out. It does look really nice when you're making a scarf or anything like that where you're just doing the back loops only because it makes a ridge. Same thing with front loops. It makes a nice little ridge in the front where you're not using the front loops. Okay, so the second part, single crochet in front loop, save my autofocus here, single crochet in front loop of next single crochet. Okay, so now we're going to do the front loop. So the front loop is right, this one right here. I'm going to just put it in, go like this, and go like that. So you're kind of pretty much zigzagging the stitches. So, now, this little asterisk usually means when pattern writers, excuse me, when pattern writers put in their patterns, it usually means there's a repeat coming. So, single crochet and back loop of next single crochet, front loop, single crochet and front loop of next single crochet. Repeat from star across, chain one, and then turn. So pretty much you're just going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, sorry, I'll show you. So this is the front, so we're going to go into the back, into the back, and then into the front. So like I said, you're pretty much just changing it up every stitch. So, and that's kind of what it looks like. I do have one finished. Excuse me. This is what it's going to look like by the time you get to the end. So you can really, you can kind of, let me see if I can get my autofocus to focus. Uh, a little bit. So this is where your front loop was, and then you went into the front loop. So it's into the front loop, front loop, into the front loop, front loop. So it pretty much, it, I like it. It makes, um, if you go to feel it, it does make it kind of rigid almost, which is nice for a dishcloth because obviously if you want to wash your face, you want a little bit of rigidity to it. Um, but like I said, this was made in an H hook. This, because I couldn't find my eye hook because it was in a project. This is an eye hook. So see what I mean? There's not much difference to it at all. Um, it does look smaller, but if you actually were sitting here with me, it does look, it's a little bit bigger. Don't mind the cat hair. But this is what it looks like when it's done. And you're gonna, you know, build it up as long as you want or as wide as you want. Just make sure it's odd numbers because you're gonna be flip you know, you're gonna be switching. And then at the end, which I'll show you how to how to finish off. So at the very end, so let's read the, the rest of this pattern for you. Repeat row two of pattern. 
Continue crocheting the pattern until you reach the length that you want your dishcloth to be. When the dishcloth is as long as you want it, crochet the last row in single crochet through both loops of previous row of single crochet, which means all you have to do is when you get to the end, so say this is your last row right here, you're going to just single crochet into both loops. So see how that's both loops instead of the back or the front, and you're just going to single crochet into both of those. And that's just going to make it a nice even, even edge. So it kind of looks like this at the end, but it's not going to be all zigzaggy. It's going to be nice and even. So the very end, finish off and hide ends. So finishing off is really, really simple. Um, I don't, oh, I don't have any scissors out here. So you're just going to go like this and just pull through. So it's kind of almost like a chain. You're going to cut your yarn and then just pull the end through. Now, once you get through, let's see if I can show you. All right. So, so say this is your end. I'm going to show you on this one because I had cut the yarn already. Um, we'll show you on this end here. This is the... Because you're going you're gonna to wind up having to finish, you're going to have to weave in all the ends. Some people do it with a crochet hook. I usually do it with a yarn needle. It's much easier. You just thread the yarn onto the yarn needle, and then you just weave it. But what I usually do is I'll, some people will weave it into the, the chain. Some people will weave it into the actual stitches. It's all preference. But you do want to make sure that you double back on your stitches. So I'm going to pull that through. Try to focus it here. My phone is just not wanting to focus today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah, it's such a little tail. All right, so bring it through. I can't see. There we go. Try to do this not while I'm looking at the camera. All right. My hands are all slippery too because I just put lotion on. Which is not fun for an aluminum hook. Alright. So. <clears throat> now. So so you went, you know, as long as you want. Excuse me. So now your end sticking out. You want to double back means that you want to go back the opposite way. So it's almost like you're locking it. So you're going in this way. And then you're going to go back. And that just means it just locks it in. And you want to do this with every single end that you have, which is a pain in the butt. <laughs> Let's see what I mean. It like you go, come on, focus, focus. There we go. So you go in one way and then you double back and you go the other way. That's all that means. And then once you're all set, you just cut it. That's all. But some people will, you know, they'll weave them in the stitches. Some people will tie them. I like to do the double back because especially with the, the, the cotton yarn, excuse me, especially with the cotton yarn, um, and you can wash it. So because you can put it in the, the, the washer and dryer, you want to make sure that your, your ends are really, really secure because you don't want it unraveling. Um, it's one thing if you did it for your own or your, trying it out and you're like, oh crap, you know, like I messed up or it's unraveled, fine. I mean, you can fix it. It's not life or death. But if you're making it for a client, a paying client, because a lot of us crocheters make stuff for people that want stuff that don't know how, they don't want it to unravel because that's going to be a huge pain in the butt when you get a nice little message saying that your project fell apart. But that is all. Um, I think next time, I think we're going to do, what's our next stitch here? Let's see. So we did single crochet. Uh, nope, I'm in the UK. Apparently I flew overseas. Uh, so we did single crochet today. I do, I would like to do uh, either the half double or the double next, or both. Um, which is really easy. Once you get the hang of it, like the yarning over, that's pretty much all that from here over, that's pretty much all that is. It's just the yarning over how many times. That's it. Slips is just really simple too. Um, but I want to, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. I think I'm going to do the half double next. Um, but if you have any questions, please comment, you know, like, subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, feel free, you know, comment, message, whatever. I said, you know, 
find me, you know, I'll put all kinds of links in the Facebook, at the Facebook, I'm sorry, I'm going to put, I'm not quite awake at the moment. I'll put links in the description. Um, I will link this pattern. So if you want it for yourself, for your computer or print it or your nook or whatever you have, um, I'll post the picture too. That way you can see what it looks like. Um, and I will post a link to the hook and handle so you can see um, some of my finished work. And my friend Nicole, she does a lot of jewelry, like wires and beads and stuff. I can't do that. I don't have the talent to do that. She is very good at it. Um, everybody has their niches, but you can, you know, see her stuff. I don't know if she'll post videos. I, I don't know if she wants to, but I would love to watch her videos. But I'm just going to ramble on and on and on forever. Um, so have a good day, guys.